Welcome back to the garage guys. Today we got an exciting video for you today about a potential plasma cutter add-on. Um, we're out here in the garage, it's extremely cold out today at um, negative 15 Fahrenheit or negative 25 Celsius for those of you that aren't in the US. So today we're going to be working on our DIY torch height controller. Okay guys, we're down in the shop, we're taking a look at this uh, THC that we assembled. So what we've done is we've taken the display, we've mounted it on a board, we actually have an Arduino Nano that's sitting inside here that we can see, and then we just used a couple blocks here to mount some wires. We have two potentiometers on here, one sets the voltage limit, the other sets the tolerance of the limit. So all the wires you see here are just simulating traces on a PCB board. What we did is we just took a little perf board and it's just used for experimenting with. So you can just plug your wires in wherever you want and then you have to make a jumper out of a wire to form a trace. So this kind of gives a little explanation on the board. So we've got our voltage divider. Our voltage divider plugs into the back of our low toast CNC machine and then it's a uh, 51 to one uh, divides the voltage down and it sends the voltage into our unit and then it's analyzed. So when this is running, we set a target voltage. And for us, target voltage for eighth inch is around 92 volts. So we set 92 volts and then there's a tolerance and it'll send a signal back and forth to the Z axis to keep the torch always at that 92 volts. So that's how the unit's set up. We did do our own software development that we put into the Arduino to make that happen. So we have one other wire that's coming out here on here and that's our torch on. So we have a signal that says our torch is on um, to have the unit start taking over. So when the unit starts up, it will actually, once the machine fires, it takes over all control of the Z axis. So the Arduino in the machine will run the touch off and once the torch fires, this thing is now in control of the torch height. And that's pretty common how all torch height controllers work. So we're gonna start uh, the first cut with this thing. We've got the THC hooked up now, we're gonna give it a try. So we're gonna do two films here. I'm gonna film the cutting. Jackson's gonna film the top of the stepper motor. We put a little mark on it so we can see how much it's correcting. So we don't know what's gonna happen. We're gonna give it a try. So let's get her going, Jack. So we're going down for, for the initial probe. We've just got a random set on the voltage. We don't know where we're supposed to be. I don't know if you guys could tell, but there was a lot of correcting going on. It was jumping around up and down, started out high, went down. So we've got some things to take a look at. So we did, a, we did a second cut, guys, to get a baseline voltage. The one on the right is a normal cut without the THC running. And we had, a, we looked at it, we have a voltage of 92 approximately. And the first cut, we just had it set at like 120. We just guessed, and it was all over the place. You can see how wide it was running. Uh, that's probably because the torch was sitting way too high. Um, so, and in the first video, you can see how the torch started out way too high, and then it came down into the metal. We're thinking about what's happening there. We're not sure. We're going to think about that for a minute and see if we can get it corrected. So we're getting ready for the second cut with the THC and we took a look at it and the THC was taking over immediately when we'd fire the torch. So it was driving it way up and then it would come down to the voltage. So what we did is we put in a delay for the THC to start a little bit after the our pierce time delay. So we'll see what happens on this cut. See if we still get driven up after the touch off. And again, Jackson's going to film the uh, top of the stepper motor to see uh, what kind of action we're getting out of it. So 
So we got the third cut in here. Looks really nice. We set the voltage at 92 volts. Um, when we watched the top of the cut, it, it did a little bit on the initial after the pierce, but it pretty much stayed the same. Now we expected that because it's a really flat piece of metal. So we're gonna take a look at that, see if we can't cheat this torch height controller to work on some bent metal. So you can take a look at the little bit of the problem we're having out here in the garage today. So this water's been in here about an hour and with some of the testing we've been doing and you can see all the ice that's forming. It's extremely cold today. So we're battling through it a little bit, but it's definitely a challenge with this cold weather today. So we're down here getting ready for a cut with the THC again. We took and we put a piece of one inch square tubing under the plate. So we're gonna drive this crooked metal and we're gonna see what's gonna happen now with this cut. Again, Jackson's gonna film the top stepper motor to see what's happening during this. Hopefully we get a good result. Not sure what's gonna happen. So I've been working on the, we've been working on the THC with this uh, bent piece, or this piece that's up on the one inch bar. And we've been having a little bit of trouble with it. We can see we've made, I don't know, eight or 10 different cuts. And one of the problems we're having is um, we added that delay in here so that the THC doesn't start working for the first little bit to let us get a proper height. But by that time, since this is such a steep grade on the metal, as it's moved, we've already contacted the metal. And if we get down so close to the metal and blow through, then the voltage spikes and the THC is trying to drive it down because it's too high. So we're running into some trouble there, uh, just not working right uh, because of that. Now, will we ever start out cutting at an angle like that? I, I doubt that ever happens. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a different piece of metal now and we left it flat and we put a bend in it so it's up about a half inch on that side. We're gonna see if we have better luck with this because we're not having any, any luck with this being bent right off the get-go. So we're gonna give that a try. Well, we've got this bent piece of metal in here now that's flat for a ways and then it bends up about a half inch over the next six inches. We're gonna give this a try, see what happens. Yeah, so if we take a look at this, I didn't set it up very good, but just a little bit of air was teetering the metal, so we didn't get a very good test. All right, we made a couple more adjustments here. Uh, we're going to give it a, a whirl. We forgot, to, forgot one setting. We're going to try it again. Got that metal stabilized. Well, that compressor couldn't have turned on at a worse time, so we cut the video, but it looks like we made some progress on this cut. We uh, got a pretty nice cut there. On here, you can see where we did get a little chatter, you know, when it first hit this bend, and then one other little spot in here. So it's just kind of a refresh thing, but it, it didn't make any contact with it along there, along the cut, whoops, it didn't make any contact. So the Torchlight controller, is working you know we're giving it an extreme test here you know we're trying to raise that sucker a half an inch over the course of six inches so we're, we're pushing it hard but in theory it is working we've got some more tweaks to try okay guys we made one more change tried to update a few things keep it running a little smoother
How about that cut, guys? Looking pretty good. We got her smoothed out. Uh, sorry for the lighting there, but it looks pretty good. You know, we're giving that thing a really extreme test. Just a little bit of dross on the one side, but, you know, just for getting a THC set up for a couple of bucks, it's looking pretty good. And again, we're extreme. You know, we're, we're going up a half inch over the course of six inches. So we're going to follow along with the torch here, guys, uh, so we don't get blinded by the torch, but we can just kind of see the motion. We should see the screw motion going on here. Now we're, we're following that same flat piece of metal and then it's bent, so we'll go ahead and get started. So you can see it going down here. So you can see the torch height controller is working in theory. You can see it stepping up along that metal. We do have a little bit of a software to look at, you know, how we're refreshing, how fast we're refreshing, things like that. So what would this look like going forward? Well, first of all, if we decide to produce these for you, we would get rid of this perf board and we would make a custom uh, PCB board that had the traces all over on here so we wouldn't have any of these wires sticking out the top the other thing we would do is we'd get rid of these two um, potentiometers that are functioning right now and we'd replace it with an encoder works the same it has a dial clicks it has a step where we could push the button so we would use this to select our voltage and we tap it we move to the next screen and then we'd select our tolerance on our voltage so we would do that and that would surface mount into the into the custom PCB board. So everything else would be surface mounted on there. Wouldn't see any wires. The LCD would still be mounted and we'd probably come up with a 3D printed case that this all fits into. So that's how it'd look. So one thing about THCs I just wanted to touch base on and the reason we've kind of put this work into it is two reasons. One, they're very expensive. To buy a Proma unit, you're talking 250 to 300 bucks for a promo unit. The second reason is um, Jackson has the ability to do the software programming so and the design of this. So one, we're able to do it and two, they're really expensive. Um, it's uh, It shocked me for how inexpensive it was for us to get a prototype put together. I, I mean, I'm just shocked how little money there is in this compared to the $250 or $300 for a Proma. And it, it appears to be working. Uh, we've got a few software tweaks left, but it's it's just amazing. Now, if we went ahead and, and did those changes with the regular PCB board and the encoder, it, it actually gets cheaper to make, the, make these things. So um, that's kind of the reason why we took it upon ourselves to do. So I don't know, Jackson, you're behind the camera, but how many hours of programming do you think you got into the thing? Probably three or four to come up with a a um, an initial revision, and then maybe probably another three or four to refine it all the way through. Yeah. So the benefit is for you guys. It, it's a it's great that Jackson loves doing this stuff just as a hobby. So he goes to work all day and he does it for a job, and then he gets to come home and play with it for fun so i guess that's what it's like when you love your job it's never a day at work well we had to end the video here um unfortunately we just ran into too many issues with the cold we had airlines freezing and ice building on them we got ice in the, the the plasma table and we had displays and computers freezing it was just too much too much hassle to deal with we did get some good testing though as you can see the torch height controller was was coming up on this piece here and it wasn't the smoothest motion that we'd have liked. We're gonna definitely have to do some more testing on that, but unfortunately, we're probably gonna to have to uh, put this video off, the next video off until spring, just so we can you know, test under optimal conditions instead of having to fight with everything. With that, we'd like to thank everyone for sticking around to the end and be sure to like and subscribe and comment what you think of the video. 
And we've got a lot of exciting things coming in the future. Stay tuned.